Welcome to the home place. I'm Paul and this is Carolyn and we are in the great outdoors today. Still on our property. We have a house on the one side of the road and then we have a little bit more land and the creek on the other side of the road. Yeah, you can't do anything with this piece of land uh, except sit here and enjoy the creek. Which I often do for my quiet time. Yeah, and we've swam in the creek on occasions, <laughs> but we wanted to talk about an imbalance that every parent can easily flop into when raising their kids. Almost it, inevitable. Yeah. All of us do this. And we'll, we'll just be right up front. Either you are too soft as a parent. Too, so your kids pretty much run the show. Too lenient. And you mm. will know in an instant, is that me? Um, or we're the kind of, and the expression we have is the sergeant major approach. The too firm. Too firm. It's like, you know, you've got well trained soldiers in the house rather than kids that love growing up and mm -hmm. enjoying things so uh, let and me... either way is actually equally as bad as the other you can tend to think oh well if I'm too soft then that's a real nice way to be actually the, the effect of that is as bad as if you're too firm yeah yeah let, let me read this there are two ways to deal with children ways that differ widely in principle and results faithfulness and love united with wisdom and firmness in accordance with the teachings of God's word will bring happiness in this life and in the next. And the other option uh, is neglect of duty, injudicious indulgence, failure to restrain or correct will result in unhappiness and final ruin to the children and disappointment and anguish to the parents. Mm -hmm. So we've got to get this right. We've got to get this mix of love and firmness right. And what we found in raising our children is that we, by default, and as we have observed, 90% of parents don't do enough of either. Right, yes. We're, it's kind of like, well, we've, we've often said if you want children that are out of the normal groove that are going to excel and really go somewhere in life you're going to have to have extra love and extra firmness it's like raising the bar if you want the bar raised for your children guess what we're going to have to raise it ourselves as parents and the thing is okay so we have to raise the bar if we try to do that in our own strength you know without god's help without prayer then we will naturally raise the bar on the firmness or the the softness depending on where yeah, we are yeah so if you're yeah. naturally more of a firm uh, parent you will if you try to do it in your own strength you will raise the bar on the firmness and you'll say children you can't do that that's not allowed and you you will raise the bar and they won't get away with it but if you don't mix in the love with it, it doesn't work. Well, there's another complication, and that is that often, I mean, well, first of all, God chose sinful human beings to become parents of children, and never having had the experience, wouldn't it be great if you could go to school for five years and then you could have <laughs> children, but actually, it isn't, even then doesn't work because it's when you get your hands on that you start to really learn. Right. And so, often what ends up happening with a couple is that if there's a firm one in the family, there'll be one that will be the one to make up for the firmness by being extra lax and extra loving and I'm going to say it like that because we think of it as that way but then it's almost like you kind of are, are reacting to each other. Yeah so I know what Karen is talking about so oftentimes you know it can be the guy sometimes it's the wife but uh, so say in this example I'm the firm one. Children you know and I get in my own wisdom my own strength without really praying and thinking about it i get too firm with the children now the tender-hearted mother's going to say oh poor you and there's a tendency then for mom to say you know dad is a bit harsh now you're starting to create a divide and what happens in this situation is the kids cotton on and whenever they <laughs> I want mean, we're something, talking two-year-olds cotton yeah, on they they when the children figure this out it's like if i want something I go to mom. If I want to get a no on something, I go to dad. And, <laughs> and then we've kind of... So you might say, well, if you've got one firm and one soft, that's perfect. But it doesn't really it, work. It really doesn't. Individually, me as a dad and Carolyn as a mom, we have to... Uh, we have to go out of our way. We have to pray. We have to study. We have to think it through. How can I be more loving? 
Now, I'll, I'll admit to you, I'm, I'm a Fermi. Well, uh, we both are. We're actually. both Fermis, our poor kids. They, they survived. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, so what does this look like? So how this looks for a child sort of 10, 12, 13, 14, somewhere in that age range yeah. is the firm parent says, you're never getting a phone. You're not having a phone. Those things are evil, wicked, sinful. You're not having one of those. That's the firm parent, parenting style. The, the lax parenting style, the, the loving... Not lax, that's not the right word, because okay. you can be diligent. The loving parenting style. Loving. The, the <laughs> loving, yeah. we're going to talk about what real love is in a minute, but the, the classic, what we think of as loving parent is, oh, you want a phone? Of course you can have a phone. Here it is, you have it, don't you worry about it. I'll, I won't have to do anything oh, to do you, with it. You, can, you, you want Facebook, you want Instagram, you want Twitter, you want Snapchat. No problem. <laughs> yeah, no, well, we, don't want, we don't want you to be upset, we want to love you that isn't love that's indulgence right, and we have a quote right. on that in a minute indulgence will not win children any more than force well, will win and, children and how that looks for the two-year-old in the store sitting in the cart is they scream and cry and fuss because they want something whatever it is this time they want it and you don't want the first and so you give it to them because that's the kind loving thing to do rather than saying no and they have a meltdown in the store but really it isn't the loving thing to do because yes. you're creating in them a thought that when i want it i scream and fuss for it and we all know adults who do the same thing and it isn't very funny is it when they get to adulthood so how do we get this balance between love and firmness going back to the the cell phone mm -hmm. so you know say you've got a, a, an early teen and they want a cell phone um the the indulgent parent gives it the firm parent says no way what how how do we do this so uh, it's our kids, I mean, we're living a different age now, but our daughter, who's 23 now, she got her first phone, well, it was an iPod yeah, back then, when yeah. she was 13. Mm -hmm. um, and we were, we felt like we were loving parents in giving it to her, but we also felt like we were loving parents in restricting it mm -hmm, and what mm -hmm. she could do with it. And, and how, how much often time, she could use it yeah. and, and what had to happen before she got to use it in a day. And, and what happened if she went against the boundaries that we right. put there right. is that the phone disappeared for a while. You know, it was on my desk for the rest of the day or a few days. Right. Well, some parents still think it's loving to say, oh, you broke past all of the blocks I put on your phone and you broke past the password and found out some way because all kids are clever enough to do that. Oh, well, then I just have to come up with another one. And it's still loving to give you the phone and just come up with some other way and some other way. And it isn't loving at all. The loving thing to do in that case is to uh, and I was reading a chapter before this program. It's in a book called Child Guidance. Mm -hmm. It's chapter 45. Five. Mm -hmm. And it's called With Love and Firmness of All <laughs> Things. That's where we're getting these principles from. <laughs> and it talks about the importance of when we deny our children, when we have to put restrictions on them, when we have to correct them, we need to, we need to drill into their heads that this is because we love you. This, we are doing this for your good. You will thank us one right. day. And how many right. times did we say that to our kids? You'll thank us one and day. And they do, they do. And they, you know, so they have on a few things. So, so, <laughs> so the young adult growing up, now they get a job and now they want something and their employer's not really into it. And so they go around the back door and sneak and tell lies and find themselves without a job because yeah. they've, we've fostered that in them if we don't say, you know what? We want you to be honest and truthful. You'll get much further if you're truthful. So if you've gone ahead back behind our backs, the phone's just going to have to go to the side for a while until you can learn that you can trust us. We want to help you. That's why we're helping you to steer you along in this whole big picture of how to use it. Now, not that this program is all about devices. No, it's not. But we kind of drifted that way. We don't have a script, as you can see. <laughs> we, had, we had some prayer and thoughts beforehand. But we, we've got to get the phone management right because by the time they're 18, you can't you can't stop them getting the phone so i mean maybe you can if you live up on top of a mountain and you don't see anybody but most kids that's not the situation right so you've got to get through this process and love and firmness is the key so i think you know 
before we ever get through the process of phones with our children, we're going to have to deal with the two-year-old and what they want and, and the don't five want. and the seven and the and, tens. Yeah. And you know, so love and firmness there is we don't love is not just letting them have everything they want whenever they want it, however they want it, and it's all life is all just their way. That really is not love. And we, you'll find we know kids that, that well, way. That are I not was going to say the two days of the year when most children are the most unhappy. Do you know want to know what those two days are? their birthday and Christmas. They get everything they want. The tree is surrounded by stuff. There's all these packages and parcels and gifts. And usually there, by the end of the day, they're as miserable as anything. It didn't bring them joy to get everything they wanted to have. And it doesn't for us adults no, either. No, it doesn't, so, it doesn't. We so, think it does, but reality rolls out that it does not. So here's the thing, if you're a firm parent, um, like both of us, you're going to have to pray, you're going to have to study about kindness, mm -hmm. about gentleness, mm -hmm. about patience. And you're going to have to uh, ask God to cultivate those things into your parenting. If you're, a, And that's difficult. I mean, for us, it's like, man, that's, that's like, oh, pulling teeth. That's, but, well, I wouldn't say it was quite that hard, but well, at least not for me. <laughs> <laughs> but then I'm just thinking, if you're a softy, if you just know that you're just... Oh, I can't bear to not give the children to what they want. To cross their will, to say no to them. Yeah. On oh, I can't bear that. That that just makes me want to run away. I feel like away. a horrible parent. Then you are going to have to ask God to cultivate you, in you, some firmness, right. some uh, uh, no sweetheart. We're not doing that. Or no well, sweetheart, you can't the do thing, that. The thing I want to say, I want to use examples. So, you know, we live across the street. There's a little road that goes between our house and the creek where we are right now. So we don't have little children. But if we did, and, you know, living at this house, they were running out to the entrance of the roadway. We don't want to say no because we're loving, right? We don't want to be too firm. We want to be loving. And they get run over by a vehicle. It's like, of course, we have to learn how to teach them when no is no. And if we don't teach them as little children, whether it's what they want in the store, but it's not good for them, or you know, running across the street, not coming when we call them, when they get to be teenagers and now they want a boy or a girl, depending upon you know who it is, and we have to say, no, that's, that's a poor choice for you. If we never started when they were little, then when they get older, then we start to see that it wasn't love to let them have whatever they wanted, whenever they wanted it, because now they're adults and it's a major deal to cross that world. Yeah, and the example you gave there of running across the street, that's the physical world. And right. I think every parent recognises, yes, it is love to grab them, you know, just before but the vehicle But if a child comes. hasn't learned no on something that's much more mundane and right. simple, then when it comes to that, they think, hey, I don't have to, have to respond to no. So, so parents, in wrapping up here, if you're a Fermi, cultivate some love into your parenting. It will make your firmness a lot more effective if the children know that you love them. Mm -hmm. And if you're a softy, um, then you're gonna have to ask God to give you some some restrictions you're gonna to have to lord help me to be firm i know it's going to be a battle but hey the children probably be so shocked that you say no they'll put up a bit of a protest but by god's strength by god's help you can stay right, strong right. and they will respect you for it right did you have another one you wanted to read uh i did but i think we're, okay. we're gonna leave okay. it be uh just one last thought um when i was at school my mom was a softie uh, so I could get most things with my mom but I, <laughs> and I love my mom dearly dearly um, but there was a teacher at school and boy uh, her name was Mrs Hall I still remember her name it's like 40 years ago um, and she was really strict and I remember I got put in Mrs Hall's class it's like the end of the world but you know as I look back now as a grown man Mrs Hall did me a lot of good Mrs Hall said to me Paul, unless you learn your six times table, you're not playing in the soccer team at the weekend. It's like, Ouch. you're what? I'm the captain of the soccer team. Yeah, I don't care. You're, if, unless you can say it forwards and backwards and you know, I can drill you, you're not playing. It's like, so what did I do? I went home and learned my six times table. That was firmness. Uh, she was very but, loving but as well. But was it firmness? But it was love. Yeah. It was love yeah. too. It's, well, it's... love can be firm and love can be soft. And it's the mixture of the two in the right portions that is true love. Right. The, and the, com the, the proper balance of those two things. The ultimate demonstration of that is the soul that sinneth it shall die. That's, that's God, the God of love saying that. 
and also yeah but i'll die on your behalf on calvary's cross mm -hmm. that's love and mercy kissing each other as the bible says so we're not we're not trying to get you or us to do anything that god hasn't done mm -hmm. it's who he is he is love and firmness in the perfect balance i just want to encourage you also that we've done some longer presentations several times on this very topic the very same time yeah we'll put with, the link in the with love description and firmness below. that explains it obviously there's only so much you can say in a, in a short presentation so if you're if this touches a chord for you then go ahead and listen to those two yeah or if you want some more practicals on how to put it into action go to the contact us mm -hmm. page and my dear wifey mm -hmm. here she's whatsapping and phone appointment in with moms all over Multiple the place times a week yeah so give her a call or a whatsapp and um, god bless until we see you next time mm -hmm.